slide. So about a week ago, I came across this debate on YouTube of two famous intellectuals that I find interesting, being Alain de Botton and Steven Pinker. Alain de Botton is most famous for his School of Life project, where he offers philosophical classes and books and YouTube videos that help people with important aspects of life. So not unlike a self-development, self-help, mental health author. And Steven Pinker is originally a researcher in cognitive psychology and linguistics, but he's more famous for writing articles and books that draw from a wider range of intellectual disciplines. So just an all-around public intellectual. I used to be pretty interested in De Botton's work, but that's a long time ago. Steven Pinker's work, on the other hand, I have been devouring ever since I came across this optimistic Canadian a couple of years ago. One of the ideas he's famous for defending, for example, is the existence of human nature, in other words, that we aren't a blank slate from birth. So the idea that there is a biological component to our behavior and our psychology, as opposed to the idea that every Everything is socialization and culture. But recently he's famous for pointing at graphs that go upward or downward in a way that is good for humanity. So the debate that I watched was about the question, does mankind's best days lie ahead? And of course Steven Pinker is there because he has spent every waking moment of the last few years saying that mankind has in fact gotten a lot better over the last few centuries and that trend is likely to continue. Now before I saw the full debate I saw a compilation of highlights that I didn't even finish because of how bitchy and irritated people were talking. And the initial idea behind this video was actually going to be a kind of rant about the format of a debate as opposed to just framing it as a discussion because I think a complex intellectual discussion that is framed as a debate almost never leads to anything productive and it's just frustrating to watch. And this debate would have been an excellent example of that because Steven Pinker and Alain de Botton are both seemingly very chill people, very mild-mannered people. And even they got snarky and hostile in this setting because of the kind of atmosphere that it creates. It's not a, not a pleasant viewing experience. However, when I watched the full debate, I realized that it was in fact not a complete shit show. And it was actually pretty interesting and pretty entertaining. So anyway, the debate was not actually just Steven Pinker against Alain de Botton. There were in fact four people. On the pro side, alongside Steven Pinker, there was this delightful British gentleman called Matt Ridley. Who I didn't really know before watching the debate, but I'm definitely going to look up what he has written after having heard him talk. When I was young, the future was especially grim. The population explosion was unstoppable, famine was inevitable, pesticides were giving us cancer, the deserts were advancing, the oil was running out, the rainforests were doomed, acid rain, bird flu and the hole in the ozone layer were going to make us sick. My sperm count was falling and a nuclear winter <laughs> would finish us off. And on the side of Alain de was a Canadian called Malcolm Gladwell. So even though the debate wasn't the complete shit show that I thought it was, it still had a big problem. The problem wasn't necessarily the debate format, even though that probably made it a lot worse. The problem was, um, a la de Botton. Because while the other three men were talking about things like uh, global catastrophe, cyber attacks, nuclear war, Alain de Botton was arguing that no matter how safe or medically advanced society becomes, it's inherent to being human that we will always suffer in ways, that we always will be unhappy in ways, that there will always be idiots. To simplify it a little bit, Alain de Botton was trying to have a debate about whether life in the future for humans would be perfect, and the other three participants were talking about whether it would be better or worse. The thing about Switzerland is that it's solved all these problems. It's got a fantastic education system, the average salary is $50,000 a year, the country's been at peace since the Treaty of Westphalia in 1648, and the hospitals are superlative. Yet, it's not paradise. Indeed, there are legions of problems. The data does not point you irrevocably to a sense that, you know, life is going to be made Perfect. So, and even though I find that discussion maybe even a little more interesting than what they were talking about, that was simply not what was the setup of that debate. It's kind of like, for example, if I were to go on a kayaking trip with friends and while paddling down the river, one of my friends busts out his Yu-Gi-Oh! dual disc and asks me if I want to play. Like, buddy, I'd love to, but maybe not right now. That example is unrealistic for two reasons. One, I would be the one taking out the dual disc and two, I would not say no. And this caused some friction, which because it was a debate turned into hostility and defensiveness instead of like a desire to sort it out in any kind of productive way. So that wasn't very pleasant to watch. There was also one thing that was adding a little fuel to the fire. So you see, Steven Pinker, I think, is not typically a debater, but in his books and other writings, he often argues about controversial issues. And in this context, which is a much calmer, cooler playing field, he often makes these witty, playful jokes and jabs when he argues against something, but clearly not meant in a mean-spirited way. My second response is, are you serious? <laughs> Are you saying, are you willing to go to a uh, peasant in Cambodia or Sudan or Bangladesh or Afghanistan and say, 
Listen, I've been there. Uh, you worry about your child dying, uh, your wife dying in childbirth. Uh, you're full of parasites. You don't have enough to eat. But you know, trust me, it's no great shakes to live in a country like Switzerland. <laughs> True, your child might not die in the first year of life, but you know, when they're a teenager, they're going to roll their eyes at you. <laughs> and you may not have to live uh, under the uh, shadow of war and genocide, but people will still make bitchy comments. <laughs> and you may not be hungry, but you know, sometimes the wine will have a nose that's a bit too fruity. <laughs> But those typical pinker jokes in this pretty competitive setting could have been perceived by the Batal as maybe just a little bit irritating. And that is why I hypothesize that this might have contributed a little to Alain uh, losing his shit. Don't retreat, remember that. This is another tactical retreat that you keep putting no, it's off. Not. We happiness define, is a, happiness we is define getting the better, area but it's not getting perfect. Lost, and you've got, we're not interested in that bit. We're only interested in the liverworm. In the first year of life, oh, another shift, don't... another classic shift. You no, shift the goalpost. No, 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 you no, can, no, what's, can't what's you the jump? So let's, let's, let's see if I we mean, get a I share. understand, but my other they're going to bring up was... the guinea worm. Any vulnerability, <laughs> they're going to bring up the guinea worm. Also, recently, I've been listening to the debate between Sam Harris and Jordan Peters, and when you compare that to the Pinker and Baton debate, it is definitely much more pleasant to watch because the debate between Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris wasn't really a debate, it was definitely a discussion and they really put effort into hearing each other out. Which, you know, takes effort, especially when you disagree on a lot of things, which was certainly the case for Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson. In a debate, you're too focused on saving face and making the other person look bad and you don't really have the opportunity to honestly hear each other out. And because intellectual discussions are almost always very complicated, if you don't put effort into honestly hearing each other out, it almost always turns into a shit show. But to its credit, in those times that an intellectual debate isn't a complete shit show, it can be a very entertaining way to consume intellectual content. And that's all I have to say about that. Bye. On happiness. Happiness no. correlates with wealth between oh. countries, within countries, and within lifetimes. It's perfectly true that you can be very, very wealthy and very unhappy, but that's all right, because it cheers up other people. So. so. <laughs>